Hi and welcome back. In this section we will take a look at advanced request handling. So there are a couple of things we will learn in this section. First we will learn how to create request interceptors. Next we will learn how to create response interceptors. After this we will learn how to debound our requests. Followed by learning how to protect our application against cross-site request forgery. Last but not least we will also learn how to use watchers in our application. So we start by learning how to use request and response interceptors. What will we cover in this video? First, we will learn how to use a request interceptor. After this, we will learn how to use a response interceptor. Last but not least, we will also learn how to show errors for each response. So, yet again, I've used the same application from the previous section. You can search for a post by filling in a post ID. And if the ID is invalid, you will get an error saying whoops something went wrong all right now open the project in your editor of choice and open the main.js file and this is where the magic happens you'll see that we add two interceptors one for the request and one for the response so let's take a look at the request interceptor this interceptor will be used for each request and will be fired before the request is sent and this allows us to manipulate request or to apply some sort of logging as you can see, we pass an anonymous method to the use method and we have access to the config property. First, we console.log the configuration and we simply return it. In this method, you can manipulate the configuration. Next, the second parameter of the use method is used when there occurs an error. So it accepts an anonymous method as well and we simply show an alert message saying whoops, something went wrong. After this, we console.log the error and finally we reject the promise using promise.reject with the error. So let's take a look at the response interceptor. This interceptor will be used for each response and will be fired once the request has been completed. Using a response interceptor, we are able to add some sort of a global error handling. So the structure of the use method is the same as with the request interceptor. First, we simply log the response to the console and return the response after this. When we got an error, we show the alert message, log the error to the console, and reject the promise which we will return. So if you want to manipulate the response, this can be done in the first anonymous method from the use method right here. So let's view this in our browser. Open up our DevTools, give this page a refresh real quick, and then let's send a valid request. The first console.log is the uh, request. Here you find information about the base URL that's being used, the URL, the headers, and the data that's being sent, which is none for this case. The second console.log is the response. So here you find information about the data that's being received. So the body ID, title, user ID, the status code, which is 200 the status text, and the applied headers. So what will happen when we receive an error? Let's search for a post that doesn't exist. So I'm gonna add something like this, all right. Well, let's give the refresh a try again. Okay, so first the request is fired, then the response will return a 404, the alert message will be shown, and the console.log with the alert, uh, with the error right here will be shown, and last but not least, we will reject the promise with the error. This will be a called error right here. So yeah, this way we can apply a global error handling system for our application. And this brings us to the end of the video. So now that we have learned how to use request and response interceptors, 